All right. Hello everybody, welcome to the Haynes Garage. I'm Mark and today I'm going to talk to you about diagnostic and repair. Uh, we have a car in the shop today that has been experiencing some random misfiring while driving down the road. Nobody wants to hear that. It's a scary thing, uh, but there are some steps you can take to fix that and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Uh, somebody like you could do it in your own garage at home, um, just like you're doing it uh, while reading the Haynes Manual. Um, so let's go ahead and check it out and see what we got. All right, so we are working on a 2003 Acura TL. This is the car that's been experiencing the random misfire. So um, right off the bat, what you're going to want to do is pull over. No sense in driving far with, with a code like that. Um, pop the hood, do a visual and inspection, make sure there's no leaks. Uh, you know, you're, you're not leaking a bunch of oil everywhere, um, coolant, whatever. Um, see if you can spot anything like that and just make sure that there's nothing in line of sight that you see that's drastically wrong. Um, from there, what you're going to want to immediately do is to get your check engine, uh, get your scan tool and check any of the codes on the, on the, uh, that's illuminated on the dash. So that's what you're going to want to do for the very next thing because I guarantee you that with a code like this um, or problem like this, you're, that's going to come up on the dash. So um, let's get to it. Alrighty, now that we've made our way over to our car here, our problem car, it's, uh, that has, it's given us some codes that we can work off of. And um, so we're reading them here on the scan tool. Uh, first step is PO306, which is misfire number six cylinder. Uh, P1399, that's a manufacturer code, but related to um, the misfire that this car is experiencing. Uh, PO300, random misfire. PO305, number five cylinder misfire. Um, and 304, 303, 302, basically it, it's saying that all of the cylinders are misfiring. Um, so that is a problem. And first of all, if you wanna check out how to use a scan tool um, and how to read codes and the different functionalities that, uh, that these, these scan tools offer, um, be sure to check out our video on that as well. Uh, my, it is very useful, so check it out. There's a link in our description for it. And so now that we have our codes figured out here, uh, let's go read what they mean in the Haynes Manual, and then we can proceed to check out our engine, and hopefully that'll give us an understanding on uh, what we need to um, look at. All right, so we got our codes, and we kind of have an idea of where to start in the engine compartment, where to start looking. So, as you can see here, we have some tape uh, wrapped around the intake manifold. That is not recommended to do. Um, the reason why we did it is because there were holes punched into the intake uh, tube. So, over time, it, they aged, and so what happened was um, cracks were made, holes were created in that. Um, not good, you don't want your engine running like that because that's unfiltered air that could cause catastrophe down the line in the engine potentially. So um, we taped it up just for now, just to see, um, just so we could have the correct airflow uh, going into the engine and the sensors are not thrown off uh, past this point. So we're at least able to check and see now when the engine is running, um, what other components might be failing. And those components, the most common ones to fail could be ignition coils and uh, spark plugs. So if the ignition coils are bad, that also probably means that that could have affected the uh, quality of the spark plugs as well. So uh, we need to make sure to get those checked out. Um, there's an easy way to do it uh, on this engine because it has coil on plug. Um, and what you do is when the engine is running, you unplug the electrical connector. Uh, normally, you know, you wouldn't want to do this, but in this case, is the coil. It's already getting a uh, random misfire code on all cylinders, so um, it's an easy way to do it. Not going to hurt much. Um, so, as the engine is running, you just unplug it, uh, plug it back in, and when you unplug it, if the coil, if the engine doesn't sputter, um, if there's no change at all, 
then that means that the coil is more than likely bad. If there is a change, then that coil is operating how it should. And turns out that probably means that the coil is uh, in good condition. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, that's probably the first place to start. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the ignition part of it. Then it comes down to compression. Um, we're gonna, also going to take the spark plugs out as well. We might as well replace those since we have a feeling that um, one or more ignition coils are bad. Um, so we're going to take out the spark plugs. And since the spark plugs are already out, we might as well do a compression test as well. Um, that way we can see you know, if there's any further, more extensive engine damage that uh, lack of compression might indicate. So um, we're going to go ahead and do that as well. Might as, um, that'd be a good idea. And uh, then the only thing left after that, uh, if we don't get anywhere with that, uh, there's a fuel issue. Um, so there's ways to go about and check uh, fuel pressure and, that, and how that might be affecting the engine and how it runs. So. Those are the three uh, key points: it's spark, or you know, ignition spark, um, compression, and fuel. Uh, that's what an engine needs to run. So we have to make sure, you know, do all the tests to make sure that um, we rule out whatever is uh, being a problem right now. So let's get to it. Oh, all right. Okay, so it's running. You can tell uh, there's a noticeable misfire on here. So the engine is shaking. I don't know how well visible it is on camera, but I could definitely feel it. I could definitely see it in my perspective. Um, so let's start and plug in some coils and see if we can find one that's bad. Start with number, uh, number one here. Okay, see it's noticeably rougher. It's running noticeably rougher when I unplug it, so. Chances are this one's good uh, because it's it's operating how it should when it is plugged in. Yeah, see it gets a little smoother. All right, move on. Okay, you can tell that's a little rougher. Uh, chances are that one's more than likely good. Smoother when I plug it back in. All right, let's check this guy. No difference, literally no difference. Sometimes you have to, it's, it'll have a subtle difference and you really have to pay attention to how the engine runs as you do it. So yeah, make sure to focus in. Um, yeah, see there's literally no change. So that must mean that this one is bad if there's zero change um, in, uh, in, the, in how it operates. So uh, this is gonna be the, the one we're gonna, we're gonna look at. And, um, so let's check on the rest of them. We'll go to the back here. Uh, these ones are a little more harder, a little harder access on this uh, this car. But nevertheless, we can still access them with the engine running. Make sure if you have long hair, you don't want to get it caught in that. You know, always take the necessary precautions. Okay. Noticeably, yeah, all right. Okay, so this one's probably good. Perfect. Let's go to number two in the back. Get a grip on it. Okay, yep, you listen to that. Look at that. That's, that one's probably good. Last one here. Yeah, rougher. Okay. All right, so it looks like we're in good shape. We got our replacement parts um, and our uh, tools to replace them. Uh, so starting off, we got our coils. We got six of them uh, for the six cylinders. And we also got six spark plugs to throw on um, under those as well. So we're gonna get started on that. 
Uh, we also got our, this is spark plug boot protector that's gonna go on the inside of the coils. You only need a little bit of it. That's just to ensure good contact uh, from the spring and the inside of the coil onto the top of the spark plug. Um, so we'll make sure to put some of that on there. Often people don't put it on, but it's, it's a good um, call to put that on there. So we also got our anti-seize lubricant as well. Um, this is going to go on the threads of the spark plugs. Uh, you do not want to put the, this, uh, you don't want to get it on the electrode area up here. You just want to keep it on the thread portion. Um, that's going to make it so you can remove your spark plugs again uh, in case they seize up or they're hard to remove. It's, it's definitely a good step you always want to do whenever you're replacing the plugs. Um, and so we got all that and let's get started on getting these all swapped out. Okay, so it sounds like we have a clean running engine. Uh, that is excellent. So it looks like we, our repair worked with the replacing the coils and the spark plugs as well. So we actually don't need to go any further with this because um, we are confident that we repaired this engine. Uh, your situation might not be the case as, well, um, as ours. Uh, if it's still running really rough after you, you do this, uh, you're gonna wanna start with the cheapest option first go to the more expensive. Um, so you're gonna want, but to do that, you wanna get the right replacement components as well and, and look in the right areas. So compression and fuel are the other two, uh, other two remaining factors in this repair. So be sure to check those out. Um, I'm not gonna tell you how to do a compression test and check for fuel problems. Um, Cause that's a, another video or another videos for another day. Um, but in this case, this is a very common way um, or common issue for random misfires. Um, so it looks like we're good and we're, we're solid. So we're gonna go ahead and clear those codes and hopefully they don't come back. And I think we've, we've done all we can here and we're, we're set to uh, go on another road trip. So thanks for tuning in and hope you found this video helpful. And remember, uh, when you're working on something on your car, it shows you how. Oh, and I almost forgot, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future videos, uh, we would love suggestions, so don't be shy. Leave those in the comments as well. Uh, I'm Mark, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. This is a Acura, 2003 Acura TL uh, S, Type S. And uh, that's it. <laughs>